Hey team, it's Jackie Lewis and it's seven o'clock on Tuesday and every week we meet here um, on the BN Multi page to do our live session and we cover all sorts of things with regard to weight loss surgery and your health after you take the plunge. And so this week we're covering things to avoid after weight loss surgery. Every week we have a different topic which ties into our e-newsletter. So generally there's a blog on the same topic that I cover in the news um, and also throughout the week in our BN Bariatric group we also have um, related posts also. So overall we hope to um, cover the same topic um, in quite a bit of depth throughout the week as well. So if you're not part of the e-news you're welcome to sign up you can do that on the website at bnmulti.com and um yeah we will kick off i've got two lots of me appearing on the screen we will kick off with um a conversation about things to avoid after weight loss surgery first i'll go through the poll because that was quite interesting i'll share the screen and each week also in the group we um we manage a poll which is also related to the same topic. So sorry to move everything around, but I'm trying to see where I share. There it is. So um, the poll last week was about things to avoid after weight loss surgery. 100 people said, which I'm loving how many people have said, um, 100 people said, since I've had surgery, I find there are foods that I used to love, but now I can't tolerate. And that's pretty common um, for a range of reasons it is because of the surgery itself will change the way your body manages different foods as well um, and also it changes a lot of the enzymatic activity as well as um, it will um, mean that you have less stomach acid on offer so some foods you might find are um, harder to cope with so some and it's all of course very individual which is always the way some things we struggle with are meat. Um, some people have a dairy issue and some people will find that um, they can't do gluten, bread, pasta, rice, that sort of thing as well. And that's the beauty of the process and that's why we called it a journey is because you have to find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And these things can also be transient. So at the start, obviously, where everything's just been turned upside down and you've had major abdominal surgery um, you may find that there are foods that just do not sit well um, and that can be during that healing period even you know three months in um, so foods that you do find you struggle with in the early stages it is worth um, going back to a little bit later down the track when you're feeling a bit more like yourself um, and I think we can obviously get quite um, put off when something doesn't go well, um, but it is a, a good opportunity to try again um, down the track just to make sure that we're not eliminating whole food groups for really long periods of time for no real reason. Um, some people do have a continual problem. Other people will find that it does pass, particularly like dairy and that sort of thing as well. Um, 79 people said, I'm aware of the things I need to avoid after surgery and try, try to avoid them as much as possible, which is a significant um, sample, which is great. Um, 42 people said, nothing I eat upsets my tummy. That would be great. Um, and it does happen. There's some people who just um, have their surgery, do their liquids and puree stages, and then on they go on to soft foods and kind of resume where they left off. Um, Others will find they go forward and backward a little bit or they, or they have foods that just aren't agreeing for that period of time as well. 15 votes. I'm surprised how sensitive my digestion is now. It's different every day. <laughs> and even to the point of how full you feel will vary. Um, and sometimes what you can tolerate um, will also vary. And, you know, a lot of people talk about their morning coffee. If it's got milk in it, sometimes they can manage it and sometimes they can't. So, it, it does come down to that. It comes down to also down the track, it's really important to be managing your gut health. So looking at a high fibre diet, um, if you're not getting enough fibre in from fruit and veggies, you could supplement with that. Um, maybe put a probiotic in um, from time to time or make sure you're relying on probiotic foods like um, sauerkraut, uh, kimchi, 
good quality yogurt. Um, the Activia brand is a particularly good one. It's been proven to have quite um, a good range of strains of bacteria as well as um, enough of them to make a difference to your health if you're eating it regularly enough. Um, so looking at those kind of things, bone broths, bone broth powder mixed in your, you know, particularly now it's winter, hot water with bone broth powder in the middle of um, like a snack meal is a brilliant idea. Very soothing and very healing for the gut environment. Um, six people said, I know there are some things I need to avoid, but I try them to see if I can have them. Um, always a bit of a gamble. <laughs> The main thing with that is that there are things that are recommended we avoid. Um, some of them are for weight loss reasons and, and kind of um, your progress reasons, so cutting down fats, monitoring your carbohydrates, that sort of thing. Others are for safety, so things like, you know, including alcohol in the first year is ideally avoided um, mainly for your safety. Um, and I'll go through the other things to avoid um, I don't want to be a spoiler. Um, five votes said I had intolerances prior to surgery, but I'm more sensitive post-op. That can be the case if you do have like a gluten sensitivity or something like that. Bariatric surgery has been known to um, um, be an implication in um, the onset of some people getting celiac disease, but it's not, it's pretty unusual, um, but they are definitely seeing that from time to time. So if you are finding that there are foods now that you just can't manage, it's often good to do the testing just to find out which ones are the culprit. And that way you can do your, you do your um, food intake accordingly. Two votes said I'm less sensitive to food allergies since my surgery, which is interesting. And that can be also because we don't generally clean up our diet and remove a lot of the processed foods and um, give our bodies a break from that kind of constant inflamed state. Um, so your body is actually settling down and your immune system will start to function better because it's not trying to fight everything else off. And it gives you a chance to actually um, some people will overcome some allergies. Two votes, carbs, sugar, and oily foods make me dump. I'd say there's more than two people who've experienced that and something definitely to avoid. Dumping can be immediate and it's, um, it's more prevalent in a bypass situation. And the reason is that um, the, the carbohydrate can go pretty quickly undigested into the small intestine and it almost gives like a... Um, kind of a shock situation almost where there might be immediate vomiting, sweating, trembling, um, diarrhea, that sort of stuff and cramping. Um, and it's basically just fit like an overload of the system. Um, and some people will get it just from, you know, a cup of coffee. Other people can eat a cake and they're not, they don't. So it's, it's quite incredible how again and again we keep saying how this surgery is quite individual. So whilst we come together in groups to find out what's happening for everybody else and it's a great sounding board, it really does highlight that everybody's different and um, we need to remember that when it comes to our own care. One vote said I became lactose intolerant, which can happen as well, and it's just because there's, um, there's a particular enzyme that breaks down lactose. It's called lactase, and sometimes those enzymes are reduced enough that, um, that dairy is um, not on the table. But the other thing to look at is finding um, support in these areas where you can play around with different things like improving gut health or looking at digestive enzymes, the application of those. So you can take certain um, preformed digestive enzymes that will help you digest each meal as you go along. Um, so it's, a, it's very much worthwhile because it'll also help with the better your gut health is overall, the better your nutrient absorption will be. So it means that your health will be um, quite good as well um just had a few comments in that i wish i couldn't i wish i couldn't tolerate stuff anymore um it would make losing weight much easier if sugar made me sick and i think you know some of that is you know we avoid things because they do make us feel unwell um it certainly makes them easier to take them out of the diet as well i'm just going to stop the share um Move that out of the way. Then in the blog this week, we had six top things to avoid after surgery. It's pretty much all the fun stuff. Processed foods, um, <laughs> processed foods, processed cheese, breakfast cereals, refined breads, 
um, snacks, things like barbecue shapes, that sort of stuff, um, mm -hmm. preserved meats like um, deli meats and that sort of stuff. I wouldn't say avoid them. I would just say don't make them a massive part of your diet. Ideally, we're looking at food that's um, as close to nature as possible. Um, processed foods like cakes and biscuits um, are good to avoid. The reason for that is they can be quite inflammatory. Um, and secondly, they are pretty unhealthy as far as bringing in trans fats and sugars and um, other inflammatory kind of, um, I was going to say nutrients, but I wouldn't call them that, um, ingredients into the diet. The other thing they'll do is mess up your microbiome and obviously will slow down your weight loss because they're quite um they're usually foods that will peak your blood glucose levels, which is what we're trying to avoid. The next thing was soft drinks and cordial. Um, a lot of people talk about not being able to tolerate just plain water and needing to break the surface with something. You can do that with like um, lemon juice or some lime or maybe some kind of um, you can steep your water in berries and that sort of thing adding um, cordial all the time I wouldn't recommend um, even if it's low if it's zero calorie it's um it can be tricking your body into thinking that um, mm. it needs more food so sugar sugary drinks and that sort of stuff basically have um, little place in the diet after weight loss surgery particularly because we're trying to lose weight but secondly because of the um just how high in sugar they are and the implications as far as type 2 diabetes and that sort of things go. We have another thing we call slider foods. Some people have heard of it, some people haven't. Um, slider foods are things that I always think of it as, um, explain it as foods that are quite um, a, substan a substantial size before you eat them, but they turn into a pulpy, mushy, nothing much in your stomach, which means when you say, say something like um, Pringle chips are my go-to um, example for these things. They're, you know, the size of uh, maybe the diameter of an apple before you eat them. Once they're in your tummy, they're pretty insignificant. They're mushy and they're just um, dissolved basically down to a liquid which means they don't take up much room they won't fill you up um, and they have a whole raft of different things in it that you don't want in your body um, so generally um, slider foods are like um, jats crackers salada cruskets those sorts of things if they're a huge feature in a meal they generally um will leave you feeling hungry later on generally because they're high in carbs and secondly because they just don't take up any room once they've been um, broken down and um, are heading through your digestive system um, so looking into that would be a great thing to know about a lot of people are unaware of these foods that they feel that they can eat larger volumes of so things like potato chips crackers pretzels um, uh, biscuits, cakes, things like that, that um, basically just um, tend to break down and um, don't take up that room you need in the tummy. It's also the reason we suggest protein first because that will make you feel full very quickly because it takes up the space you need. Um, the other thing to avoid, number four, is alcohol. Some surgeons are recommending absolutely no alcohol in the first year, um, which is... I feel a sensible recommendation if weight loss is your goal and good health. Um, it, if you're having a, you know, a meal where you're once a month going out for a drink or something like that, but it, um, it's, it's a, you know, something that we do for a social outlet, of course. Um, but it generally shouldn't be a feature in the diet. The, re the again, the reason is it's empty calories. Firstly, um, it obviously has no um, health benefits. Um, unless you drink that one, I think it's a hundred mils of red wine has some health benefits because of the resveratrol and the, um, the way it's made, but anything above that 100 mils, you actually negate any benefit, um, and you're actually taking from your health in a way. Um, also when you're processing all of your body fat that you're melting, your liver and gallbladder are under quite a lot of stress. Um, so making sure that you, your lifestyle choices are supporting that and not loading up the liver and the, gall, the um, gallbladder with other things to do like um, processing alcohol. Um, 
if you do choose to drink, it's great that you have a substantial meal and enough to drink as far as water goes so that you don't feel unwell. Some people also will get drunk very, very easily. So it's something to, you know, the first time you do try alcohol, it's, um, it's to tread very lightly. Um, the last thing to avoid are greasy and deep fried foods. Um, and they kind of speaks for themselves. They bring um, a range of different things. They can be slider foods like um, hot potato chips. Um, those kind of things will be, you know, large and long once before you eat them and then mashed up potato in your tummy later on with a whole lot of fat. The other thing is if the wrong person's cooking those chips, they're obviously they can be cooked in in oil that's been reused and reheated, which means it can become rancid and um, it turns them into trans fats, which are actually not very good for your health. The very last one I want to concentrate on is um, avoiding ibuprofen. There's a quite often this question comes up in our groups. Um, it is recommended that I've, ibuprofen is avoided after weight loss surgery of any kind. Um, it has been shown to cause ulcers and those ulcers can form in the um, anastomosis or the joint of your um, surgery. And that's why they avoid it basically. Um, so paracetamol is a good option. Um, and particularly after surgery, ibuprofen should always be um, like directly after surgery if you're in that healing phase. Ibuprofen should always be um, um, uh, not your first choice of painkiller because um, it can lead to, um, it doesn't, it um, inhibits the um, clotting um, part of your healing process as well. So that's all the fun stuff to avoid. Also in the blog this week was other um, relative reading that was things that you should include after weight loss surgery. So it's a bit more positive as well. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Oh, I've got the solution to the brain uh, fit riddle. So I'll go back to share. Got my dog crying in the background. <laughs> um, brain fit Friday. On Fridays in the group, we have brain fit. So we've got a little riddle. And um, last week was particularly funny. I think everyone got into the conversation about why this man wanted to jump out of the submarine window. This week, why are 1984 bottles of whiskey more valuable than 1977 bottles of whiskey? And the answer was because there were seven more bottles. So we did position that in a way that got you thinking in years, not in numbers, we hoped. But we did have a good response to that one. And um, we will post another one this week. So um, we make sure you have a bit of fun on a Friday afternoon. And um, I've just got a couple of questions that were posted in the group this week, which are always relevant. I think it's great that people are still posting questions. And if you've got any questions, you can post them in the group during the week. Um, and we do try to bring them into the live session. If they don't get answered in the live session, I'll usually have a look as much as I can through the group and um, answer them to my abilities. Kylie wanted to know, I try to focus on eating protein first, um, but I'm finding I'm not get, met, getting many, if any, vegetables. Um, I would look at, is this okay, she said, um, if I'm having all my BN multi. Um, the BNs are meant to support a relatively healthy diet. So if you're not getting any veggies in, um, I would look at maybe including them as snacks in between or trying to um, get them in some way you can. Um, if you're really finding that you can't fit anything in other than your protein portion, it might be worth um, discussing that with your dietitian because, yeah, going without, not only do you go without veggies, you go without all the plant nutrients that come with the veggies. Um, so they have a whole lot of other benefits, lots of fibre firstly, but every different colour has a different benefit in the body as far as um, reducing inflammation. I'm going to say it again. Um, <laughs> keeping you regular, looking after your gut health. So the veggies actually help to um, breed healthy bacteria in the gut and um, protect your immunity. Whereas a multivitamin, as much as they have everything that would meet your needs, um, they're a support, um, they're a sideline support to a already um, hopefully relatively um, whole and varied diet. 
Um, so I hope that answers your question. But with that, if you are having trouble fitting in things, it, it may be that the protein portion is either too big or you're actually um, you're not fitting it in. And they'll, your practitioner will have lots of tricks on how to manage that as well. So it's always good to reach out to them. But um, just like mum said when we were kids, it's not good to go without your veggies for too long. Um, and Mel asked a question about gallstones. Um, I'm currently waiting on surgery for gallstones. Um, following the low-fat anti-inflammatory diet but still losing an average of a kilo a week and currently underweight, not wanting to lose any more. Um, that's a hard one because that's when I usually say put in your healthy fats and, you know, fill out things with peanut butter and, like, they're quite rich foods as far as um, things go. Um, when I wonder when the surgery is, but I would definitely look at um, going to see your practitioner. The other thing you can do is, like, fill out your meals with, like, um, those, they're called Ensure. There's a drink you can buy from the pharmacy, which is like a, a liquid diet, um, and they're quite easy to digest. They use them for people who are, like, what we call convalescing or recovering um, or people who've had... Um, surgery or if they have like things like um, Crohn's disease and they're trying to take the pressure off the digestive system but still keep you nourished so you could ask at your pharmacy for something like that um, and just see if you can find something that you can tolerate until you do get the surgery um, gallbladder is an, is quite common um, after weight loss surgery there's a range of reasons but there's a lot of people who have the surgery and then will need a gallbladder removal um, and it comes from the process of also um, reducing your body fat. Um, so I hope that helps. But I would say, firstly, check in with your team because they'll be looking after you. Ask them about, you know, when you, you know, you obviously have a surgery date booked, but what can you do in the meantime to maintain your health? Also, if that's happening, just make sure you're really focused on taking your multivitamins every day because that will help you to recover. You want to try and avoid deficiency anywhere around surgery um, because those nutrients are pretty key in your recovery. Um, Georgina asks, I'm four months post-op and I'm always feeling hungry. Um, that one could be a range of things. Dehydration will actually make you feel hungry um, and also eating, your, um, eating too many carbs will do that. Um, or not enough um, good fats. Good fat will help you feel satis satisfied or satiated. Um, so it could be something to do with that. Some people do report this if they've got um, like a silent reflux or something like that. So it's also, again, if it's something that's weird, always ask your team and get them to um, assess it. And, you know, no questions, a silly one as far as your health goes. So it's better to be um, it's better to ask them and then them say, no, there's no problem. You're just, you know, eating your carbs first um, than to sit around feeling hungry all the time first because it's miserable. But secondly, it can be something else that um, needs attention. So always if something changes or um, something just doesn't feel like it should, it's always better to talk to your team sooner rather than later because um, things will progress if there is a problem and you can just nip it in the bud. And that's what the professionals are there for. They are very well versed and there's always so much research going on in this um, space that we're always learning new things about how to look after people and um, what to expect and um, how to manage different situations as well. So they've likely seen it all and they can just give you a couple of solutions pretty quickly. Whereas if you sit and wait for trying different things, you, um, you may crack the code quickly, but you might not. So you, it's better to, um, to get that input as soon as you can. Which leads me to the next um, question, Shirlene. I had... Um, gastric sleeve in 2018 and I lost 30 kilos but I've normally I've nearly put half of it back on um, has anyone else been in this situation and got the weight back off so this is a time where I would have said I would go back when you've added five kilos um, not wait until you're then down the track put on 20 kilos or something like that so again early intervention when you see something changing is a key because it will just mean it's so much easier for you to reverse if it's only just started to happen um, regain can happen um, and there is an expected amount of regain I think it's five percent so once you get to your you know goal weight or wherever you want it to be it's generally the norm that you will regain just a little bit um, 
which can be hard on its own when your whole focus was weight loss and then you see the scale climbing you're like whoa is this going to keep happening so that's one thing to keep a check on um also looking at you know what was happening before when you were losing weight that's not happening now or what is happening now that is maybe um, getting in the way of weight loss have you changed your activity levels um, have you started snacking are you not eating your protein first those kind of things the one thing you might find is that portion control has um, lost a focus so get back out your plate and your bowl and start measuring out your meals to a bariatric portion because as much as we talk about um, you've got this revised little tummy you will find that um, you'll find some people will find there's more room. So we start to utilize that room in the tummy when really we should be just eating a portion just to make sure that we're not overdoing it. Um, so looking at those kind of things, but de de definitely go back and um, get some input so that you're not again stabbing around in the dark trying to work out why there's no more weight or there's weight regain. Um, from there, we often will reassess your actual basal metabolic rate. There's a whole lot of things we can do. We can look at whether you've lost muscle and then, um, you know, if you're losing lots of muscle because you're not meeting your protein needs, you will find that regain is more um, is easier because you're less um, metabolically active. So if your diet hasn't been on point with protein and you've lost muscle weight you will find that it's easy to put on fat because your metabolism isn't like roaring like a good strong motor in the um should be so i would definitely um have a look at portions have a look at um the order of your food eliminate anything that's processed just clean out the pantry and pretty much reset that so that you've got just food on hand that is helpful to your goal um, Make sure you're exercising regularly and check in with your dietitian. And um, it's not uncommon, so don't ever feel that you're failing. Don't ever feel that, um, you know, you're the only one and that you should have got this right. It's it's definitely not a fail. It, and it can be that some people need further medical intervention, um, and that's being proven time and again, that there are some patients who have weight loss surgery and then they'll also need an intervention with um, medical weight loss or they call them anti-obesity drugs. So um, please don't ever hold off on seeing your team because you think you're not doing it right because you are. Um, it's just a process and it's a tricky disease state and it's something that um, we deal with um, over the longer term. So I would say, Shirlene, pop back and see your team. Tony asked a question. I'm wondering what sort of meals we are allowed to eat for lunch and dinner, please. Do beef, sausages or Silverside have any protein? A little confused as to what meats are the best ones. Ones. Good question. Um, so all meats have protein. Proteins found in chicken, beef, fish, eggs, beans, legumes, those kinds of things. Always um, have a look at including more beans and um, legumes into the diet so you're not just relying on um, meat all the time. It depends on, um, okay, I'll start with what's high in protein. Highest in protein are like pork and turkey, chicken breasts, those sorts of things. Dairy has a lot of protein in it as well. Um, but also looking at which meats you're eating. So if I was looking at a weight loss plan, I would probably look at really good quality sausages if I was going to eat them. But even better, I would look at lean cuts of meat that are just, um, you know, um, pork loins and um, like pork backstrap is a really good option. Chicken, um, fresh fish, um, little salmon portions you can buy frozen from Aldi, those sorts of things. It's looking at quality. Um, other things like processed meats and deli meats and that sort of stuff still have protein in them, but they come with a whole lot of other things, sometimes like sulfites and salt. And um, always good to just try and keep the diet as clean as possible. If you need any more information, you'll probably find on our website, if you go to bnmulti.com and just at the top, there's a search window. If you just put in the word protein, we've covered it so many different times and there's there'll be stacks of blogs and um, lots of interesting articles on that. I've also done a few podcasts and um, covered protein and the next two that will be released. Uh, actually, um, the most recent one was Sally Livick. If you look for that one on the Australian Weight Loss Surgery podcast site, there was a podcast I did with Sally Livick 
recently. She's a dietitian and we just, all we did was talk about protein. It was a really good episode. Um, and the next one that will be released, I did with Chrissy Freer. So that is also on um, protein needs, obesity and sarcopenia, which is like muscle wastage um, when protein is um, in short supply. So I hope that helps. And last but not least, go back to sharing because I want to show you this. Come on. Um, this one is the prize of this week. We've gone with the $50 gift card again. So not only do you get a prize, you get to choose your own prize. Um, and with this, it's a $50 gift card. You can also add to it. So if you want something that's more than 50 bucks, obviously you can have it. Um, we just issue that via email. So if you are announced as our winner of Transformation Tuesday this week, please send us an email to support at bnmulti.com and um, just let us know that I mentioned you'd won the prize. So winner of the week is Molly Oliver. Congratulations. This is a beautiful story. Um, all my life I had zero confidence. I looked in the mirror and hated what and who I saw. At my biggest, I was a size 24. Um, I'd done a lot of research about my bypass. My doctor and I, doctor said I couldn't have the surgery as I'm not a diabetic. That upset me even more. When I met my partner and said, I met my partner and said, if you want the surgery, he will pay for it. I thought to myself, is this really happening? Oh my God, I'm going to get my dream. Well, everyone, my life has done a total 360. I had my surgery on the 7th of December, 2020. I'm now six weeks, six months post-op and wait, before weight loss surgery, I was 120. And now from the 7th of June, I'm 70 kilos. Um, 50 kilos lost forever. I feel great and I'm a size 12 to 14. I look in the mirror and I love what I see. I don't even look like me. I always get emotional. Um, <laughs> I think that's, yeah, it's not only um, about the weight loss. You just have a look at what other things we've got inside that come to the fore. So it's, um, I'm so pleased you shared your story with us and that you've done such a great job. So keep it up and please contact us because um, you won a prize. So you will be um, able to use the gift, card, the gift card on our website. So stick around. I've told you what's coming up with the... Um, Oh my goodness, I'm flicking everywhere. I've told you what is coming up with the podcast. Stop the share because I've made a mess of my screen. Um, and next week there's no live because I'm going on holidays. <laughs> I think there's about 100,000 people who are going to be on the road next week because we can't go anywhere else. So all my friends, the kids are breaking up from school and it's like, where are you going? Oh, we're going on a road trip. So um, we will be one of those Griswold families on the road um, and I won't be here next week so we'll still roll out everything else um, because we're so efficient and we're ahead of time with all of our content and the newsletter will come out and um, we just won't cover it in the live session the next live after that will be on um, Wednesday the 30th uh, Yes, at 7 p.m. So tune in for that one. If you miss any of our live sessions, which I bet you don't because you really want to see it live, um, we do post them on the Australian Weight Loss Surgery Podcast website each week. And what our wonderful tech team do is um, categorise the questions so that anyone who's either having weight loss surgery or has got a question or a query um, can generally find the time where I've answered that question in one of our live sessions and it's documented in a list on the side so you know each live session um, which questions and topics I answered um, questions about as well. So I hope that helps you because that's the aim of our game and um, Whatever you're doing, I hope you're staying warm. Oh, man, I got stuck in the rain this morning at home. It was freezing. So, um, and only about to get worse because we're heading south. So stay warm and have a wonderful week. Be good. See you soon.